Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're installing a set of friction shocks for Renegade cycle carts on our Aston Martin. So stick around. So this is our Aston Martin cycle cart LM8, 1932. And uh, this is a great looking little cart. It's got a lot of details. But it's lacking one thing. The Inspiration car had a set of friction shocks on the front end, and we don't have those until now. So Mark Parnell at Renegade Sack of Carts started making these a short time ago, and I ordered up a couple sets, one for this cart and one for the Samson. And so these things are really beefy, really nice looking parts. And uh, here's Mark's information if you don't already have it. Ring him up or get on his website. He's got other parts for our second cart. So I came up with some tabs. These are just little metal tabs I made. To match up with a tab I found, a weldment tab I found at the hardware store or at the metal supply store. It's already got a, a cert, cert in it, but you can do this with just four sets of tabs without this cert. I'm trying this. We'll see if it, if it's, if it holds up or not. Uh, you're going to need a couple of nuts and bolts, or some actually some washers, rather. And I've decided to use this threaded coupling. I'm going to weld this to the chassis, and the bolt will thread through that. I'll show you how that's going to work in a second, but here's the size on that. It's a 5 16 by 18 coupling nut. I got that at Lowe's. These were $2 for a set of two, so not too expensive. And um, yeah, these are really nice. They come with a sticker already printed on here. This is a spring, cut spring material to put the tension on it so it can be adjustable. You can adjust your tension. Inside of here, looks like some neoprene washers. Uh, that's your friction material. And some friction shocks originally had leather or different materials in there to, to dampen and create the friction so that these would function properly so that they restrict movement and you can adjust how, how tight or how loose you want them to be. Um, so I've been thinking about this for a couple weeks on how to install this on the cart and uh, let me show you what I've come up with. Okay, you can see how these brackets are assembling. I just bolted them on here and um, so there's your weldment for the frame at the top and the weldment for the frame or for the axle rather and these are uh, slightly shaped. I just put a bevel in there so that you can, uh, it corresponds with the size of the axle inch and a half. So I've got both of these kind of mocked up. And uh, let me show you what I'm thinking. I'll see if I can hold the camera steady enough to uh, put this on here. So basically, the nut will be welded to the frame up here, and these small weldments will be welded down there on the on the uh, axle. And it's really close to that U-bolt. When I put it flush on here, there's a tiny bit of space there. So I'm probably gonna have to tack this up and weld it from the inside on that the bracket on the inside toward the uh, the U-bolt and get welding on the outside. So it's not gonna get welded on both sides, you can see how much space is there. But uh, that should work. And um, so I'm gonna hold this here, kind of give you an idea what that should look like in relation to everything here. So it's really up to you how you wanna mount it. I'm trying to figure out a way so it doesn't bind. I thought about putting it on top, but then there's not a whole lot of space here. So putting it in front of it makes sense. Uh, you could space it out further, but the problem is this angle here changes and it could put this at a weird at a weird angle. So this is roughly straight right there so that as it goes up and down through its travel uh, hopefully this won't bind. So, uh, But we will see. This is the uh, first time I'm doing this so I'm learning right along with you. Okay so clean some paint off the chassis and uh, tack this up, welded it in place. Seems to work pretty good uh, going through the motion of travel. It's not binding or anything. Um, I attempted to get these bolts lined up parallel to each other when it's on the ground, but I realized this is probably a little too far that way. Doesn't seem to harm anything. Uh, looks pretty good. Not sure what, how much alignment really even matters on these things, but um, like I said, we're all learning about this. So if I were to do it again, I might move this forward a little bit because I put it up on jack stands. It kind of threw off where parallel was. So anyway, not the biggest of deals, but maybe when you got it on the ground, mark where parallel is before you take your wheels off. And... Uh, Maybe get that parallel, but it doesn't really matter when it's on the ground. It doesn't look too bad. But at uh, any rate, moving on to the other side. This first side was a su success. Okay, so this is the second side. I'm using the uh, spring when I tack in the pieces. So I've tacked the top part and I've tacked the inside of the bottom. And so I'm going to disassemble this now. Finish weld that, finish weld that, put it back together, and then weld this outside tab on. Okay, so the lower tab or inside tab and the upper tab are installed. And I cleaned them up a little bit with a flapper disc. There's a little bit of splatter on there and a little bit of more splatter, but I can't get the axles kind of in the way of cleaning that off all the way. 
so before I paint off the ticks and stuff apart. But uh, sorry, that's a little blurry. Coming together pretty good. So uh, one more tab to weld on, we're all done. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun to, to show you before and after. So I've unhooked the springs and I'll show you how much suspension travel this has now and I'll hook them back up and show you what that looks like also. So take a look at this. That's just me putting a little bit of weight on there. See how it jounces around? Very buggy-like, so I'll put it back on it. Hang on a second. Okay, so I hooked the shocks back up. I can tighten it up a little bit, that's pretty good. A whole lot better than it was. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video and all the other videos we have on the channel. Lots of other cycle cart content. Check out Renegade Cycle Carts. He's got some great parts for the cycle cart enthusiast. Parts that are hard to make yourself and even parts that maybe you would never tackle on your own. So thanks Mark for doing all that. Like and subscribe. Check out our Amazon store and our Etsy page for the great t-shirts my son designs. See you guys next time. Get out in the garage and build something cool.